My name is Leslie Linball, though in the online world I'm known as 1% Yellow. This video was created for Dr. Alec Koros's ECI831 class and reflects my attempt to become a social artist. Through this project, I hope to connect individuals from my undergraduate university, the Augustana campus of the University of Alberta, with individuals from the University of Mary Washington, who are exploring the possibilities for liberal arts education online. The point of contact between these two schools is their mutual membership in the Council of Public Liberal Arts Colleges, or COPELAC. The University of Mary Washington is exploring the digital realm from the perspective of a small liberal arts university. The online learning initiative will serve not only as a model for how to bring liberal arts online, but also establishes a digital community, a space where other liberal arts schools can connect, interact, and learn. The five values that emerged in this process, community, active learning, self-directed learning, reflection, and interactivity, have been used to steer the process of course building in a unique values-based approach to program development. At the state level, there's like it's being strongly suggested that um, our universities need to be thinking more and more about ways to deliver um, our programs online in part to reach wider, more varied audiences around the state. And so for those of us working at a place like Mary Washington, which is you know, small liberal arts, if there's one thing that students tend to say about their experience at a place like Mary Washington, it's that they had these relationships with their faculty members, these really strong, powerful intellectual relationships. And that really is this, this core shared tacit value that we all have at this institution. And so when we start talking about going online and you look around at other institutions, how other institutions are tackling this, it for, quite frankly leaves me cold one can end up justifying the, the state of Virginia or whoever's uh, goal to just make a cheaper way to do education. It's not necessarily cheaper, but it downloads the cost onto the student. We did look at sort of how other schools were evaluating their online courses and approaching the development of online courses. And what we discovered was this very heavy handed approach. Our very first conversation was kind of a two hour brainstorming process on, on what liberal education means and um, that those five elements were what came out of that conversation. And these are the five values of the liberal arts education that we have been exploring in the Social Artists series. What we've tried to do um, is to get away from that prescriptive approach to online learning and to get away from the notion that there is any kind of one-size-fits-all approach, um, whether it's technology or pedagogical approach. Well, the way we talk about this is that this is a value-driven approach to online learning as opposed to um, a rubric-driven approach or uh, even an assessment-driven approach. In our process with our cohort of faculty, we didn't want to tell them, here's what you must do. So at every stage, we basically had a conversation about whatever the issue was. And this process of having conversations and building community extended into the digital world as well. The course review was conducted on a comment press, which allowed instructors to post their syllabus, as seen on the left, as well as pedagogical approaches to the digital course that would address the five values discussed earlier. Reviewers' comments were posted on the document, as seen on the right, and a digital conversation grew around the course plan. In addition, a parallel site emerged where individuals could contribute ideas for ways to address the five values in their various courses. There's nothing better than getting people who are actually using um, uh, all kinds of social networks to see what's possible. I've never actually asked students, for instance, how we might use the internet to uh, um, our online interactions to further their, their learning, which is kind of weird. The OLI includes student voices by asking individuals to contribute to the course review process. You have to be even more structured from this point of view of what are your objectives and make sure that everybody understands that because this thing can take off and go directions you have no, haven't anticipated. People can, can end up going down roads that, yeah, this is great, but it's not what we wanted to cover necessarily. The teaching idea list is a way for more experienced instructors to assist each other in navigating concerns like these. The big challenge is to not add 
unduly to the uh, workload of students. It's something that, that I've felt in the past. I've had this great discussion forum for Canadian politics course that worked really well, but was so time demanding. It actually stands in the way of learning after a while because it's so demanding. There might be a possibility in the future to to change the, uh, the idea of what a lecture is and how course hours are um, to include a, an online portion. One of the ways we see this now is the idea of the flipped classroom. I'm not going to dictate what you do, but you have to share it, and it has to be process oriented and it has to be something that interests people. <laughs> like, I'm interested in you interesting me. You know what I mean? I do think there's value there. Students are supported in sharing their interests by building their own space on the web. I decided at one point in time to take advantage of taking some courses. My first call with the professor, my first question was, how are you feeling? And the answer was, I have no time to talk about myself. And so how did you react to that? I dropped the course. We, we want to accept others as part of our emotional exchange. If, if that emotional part, if there is no fulfillment in various degrees for different people, uh, the, the whole thing may fail. It certainly is possible um, to do really neat things, um, but only if uh, there is also other kinds of community happening face to face. Because digital education happens in absence, we have to make a special effort to create a sense of presence. This can happen through synchronous sessions, Skype meetings, Google Hangouts, and even by using video and audio feeds. I can see it being very easy to slip into the sort of the mass online course, um, which would get away from, from who we are and, and what we want to be. The MOOC model demonstrated in projects such as Coursera, can include thousands of students in the course experience. It fails to address some of the values that UMW and other liberal arts institutions consider imperative to education. I think a lot of these values can be performed really effectively online if we understand, if, we, if we're willing to develop kind of a deep understanding of what's going on online. Um, of course, that means not adapting the internet to old standards, but to develop specific standards to uh, online education that uh, that's fit the more specific. We are exploring to see what we can learn about this. Um, I think there's a lot to be learned there. Um, I think that many academics will be surprised um, if they actually believe what we tell them, uh, you know, which is another problem in and of itself. But um, but no, I'm, I'm excited by it. I think it's I think it's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all I will say about that. <laughs>